Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Great. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in. We're going to start with Jennifer. Um, you've been head writer on this series from the start. And now as we're heading into the third season, what were the questions that you knew that you had to answer for fans right out of the gate, especially after those cliffhangers at the end of season two? Ooh. Well, I'd say uh, some of the questions that I know fans have won't aren't going to be answered until a little later in, in the season. Um, but what I knew I wanted to see and what I think fans also wanted to see was more of an interaction between Omega and Crosshair uh, and exactly what is going on on Mount Tantus where they are stuck. So that was, you know, and we see that right off the bat in uh, in the beginning of season three. Awesome. Brad, you've directed a number of Star Wars properties throughout your career. What has made working on the Bad Batch stand out in this franchise? And what is your favorite part about it? Ooh, I mean, it's all fun. We always say we're going to make the next show the best. But I got to say, you know, working with Jen, has been so awesome. And our whole team behind the scenes, our whole cast and crew is has just been such a delight. It's all hard to do. There's no day that's easy, but we all put so much of our heart and souls into it. That's always what I will come away with on the show. I know that's not a uh, an answer dealing with the mm -hmm. arcs and the drama and the action, because we love all of that. But really, be behind the scenes on this show has been like unlike any other show that I've worked on. Awesome. So for both of you, you got to bring in Sagarera. There were Wookiees, and you've even had a Rancor. Is there one Star Wars character or species, what creature that you really want to bring into the show or one that you got to work with in season three that you're excited about? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't really an answer to that question, but kind of. Um, but I will say the Lurka Hounds uh, that we introduce and particularly Batcher. Uh, was a pleasant surprise. I know it, it doesn't exist in other Star Wars uh, content. However, whenever we are creating new creatures, new species, uh, it's it's a challenge, a fun challenge. And uh, the Lurka Hounds, and particularly Batcher, I, I was I was in favor of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, wow. So it's. Uh... It's as a as a massive fan, like for my whole life, there's always the tendency to want to play with all the toys all the time. But we, we always say we just want to make sure that it makes sense if a character comes into our story. One character that stands out, Saj Ventress, comes into our story this season. And that was, I'll just say that was awesome and crazy. And we love it. <laughs> I bet. Um, so the question of Emery Carr and Omega's connection is one has, that has fans just like on the edge of our seats. Can you tell us anything about how that is going to play out in the season? Oh, you're you're going to see it. <laughs> it's important to keep in mind, though, that uh, Omega and Emery have had a very different uh, childhood, uh, whereas uh, Omega's spent time with the Batch. Uh, she's a valued member. She's family. Uh, has experienced that kind of dynamic, whereas Emery uh, did not and, and grew up more in this kind of imperial, weird science area uh, under the tutelage of Dr. Hemlock, which is very different than the Batch. So again, seeing how Omega can relate to her and how Omega is able to sort of make a connection, it does take some time, but uh, it's it's very fun to see that grow and change throughout the season. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Thanks a lot.